noise. It's all around us. And we try to block it off by listening to music or delving deep into our thoughts. But it always finds a way to interfere and take us out of our personal imaginative space. It's something that we don't notice until we can truly block it off. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Amin. I'm a software engineer and I make videos to share my love and understanding of tech with you. In today's video, I will be reviewing the Bose QC35 IIs and will be sharing my experience and impressions of it. As a disclaimer, I'm in no way an audiophile, but I did go through my fair share of headphones in the past and this was my first premium set. And because I value your time, Here's today's agenda, and I'll be adding the timestamps to the description below. But in a nutshell, I love these headphones. I've been using them every single day for about two years now, and the experience has been phenomenal so far. The QC35 has a functional design which results in a minimal, sleek look that gets the job done. The headband has a soft Alcantara cushion on the underside, and the ear cups are soft and flexible to go comfortably around the ear for long uses. At 240 grams, these are the lightest headphones on the market, and at times, you might even forget you're wearing them. On the right cup, it has a physical toggle for powering the device, playback controls, and volume controls too, and a micro USB port for charging. On the left cup, it has a headphone jack and an action button which can be configured to control the noise cancelling level or call up your virtual voice assistant. The headphones come with a hardcover carry case, audio cable, and a USB cable. Personally, I don't go anywhere without the hardcover case and it's compact enough to fit inside a messenger bag and it has a sleeve to put the audio cable and USB cable as well. When I compare these headphones to my old $20 Sony headphones, these are less bass heavy and punchy. They work great for most music genres, however, they don't necessarily specialize in one genre or the other. The sound profile can be best described as neutral, which in of itself is not a bad thing, since it's a profile that meets the needs of most people, including myself. However, if you're looking for more details in the mids and the highs, then you may be a little disappointed. This should not come as a surprise if you are familiar with Bose's sound signature. However, if you are not familiar with it, then I would highly recommend using Bose's risk-free 90-day trial where you're able to try out the headphones at your leisure and in your own environment. The mic on the QC35 II is overly sensitive, and this could be to how noise cancelling works where it's actively listening for low frequency sounds to neutralize by producing the opposite of that frequency. When taking calls outdoors, the other person has an increasingly difficult time hearing me just because the mics are picking up the wind and my general environment. And because of that, I end up using my phone in the end for those longer conversations. Noise cancelling. This is where the headphones bring value. This is the reason why you should even be considering these headphones in the first place. The first time I turned on noise cancelling, I was blown away by the quietness of my environment and how much clarity I had when listening to music. For the first time, I didn't need to put the volume to 100 to hear a podcast or listening to original soundtracks or lo-fi music. I was hooked. There are two levels of noise cancellation for different environments, high and low. Where high is ideal for outdoors and commuting and low is for indoor to block off the noise of fans or an air conditioner. This can be controlled either by the action button on the left ear cup or through the Bose Connect app. The QC35 II can connect to two devices at the same time and you can select a specific device through the Bose Connect app if you have more than two devices registered to it. The switch between devices is seamless. I can be listening to music on my computer and if my phone rings then I will hear the prompt and it will pause my music on the computer. The Bluetooth connection has been great for the most part However, there were some cases where it would disconnect from my Pixel 3a or the connection gets choppy and the media isn't as fluid. 
It doesn't happen frequently enough to be annoyed by it, but it's still worth mentioning. The QC35 II can also be connected via headphone jack, which is great for the times when your battery runs out and you want to continue to listen to your media. However, without a battery charge, the noise cancelling feature will not work. The battery life has been consistent with the 20 hours that Bose reports on their website. That number is for continuous playback with Bluetooth and noise cancelling enabled. However, if you have noise cancelling cancelling enabled while plugged in via the headphone jack, then in my experience you would have about 4-5 to five days of usage time for about 8 hours of listening time per day. Just don't forget to toggle it off when you're done using it. The recharge time is about 45 minutes to fully charge the headphones. However, it takes about 15 minutes of charge time to get two and a half hours of usage out of it from a dead state. The Bose Connect app is an optional application that you can install to interact with your headphones. It provides you with firmware updates, lets you select a specific device to connect to, shows your product information, and lets you configure the action button. It works well for what it's designed to do. There are some reports that certain firmware updates have reduced the noise cancelling performance, but in my experience, I have not noticed a degradation of performance. For a long time, Bose was considered to be the king of premium noise cancellation headphones. And now with the introduction of Sony and Apple's noise cancellation lines, they are facing some serious stiff competition. In fact, Sony's headphones are deemed to provide better noise cancellation and better sound quality when compared to the Bose. The Apple AirPod Max is another one you should consider if you're already within the Apple ecosystem. Now is a fantastic time to be getting into noise cancellation headphones since there continues to be more options out there available to you. So definitely do check those out to better understand and explore the world of noise cancellation headphones. Bose has engineered a compelling product for most people looking to get into noise cancelling headphones. The Bose QC35 II is one of the best in class noise cancelling headphones with phenomenal comfort, flexible usage, 20 hour battery life, sublime customer support and a sound signature for the majority. For the price of 299 US dollars, it falls in the premium line of headphones. And for that price, you might consider the Sennheiser or the Taudio Ecnica for the better sound signature. However, for this pair, you're definitely paying for the noise cancelling feature. For someone that's been using this for about two years now, I can confidently recommend this product. If you like this video, don't forget to press that like button and feel free to subscribe and press that bell icon to stay up to date with my latest uploads. And if you're looking for a companion to these headphones, definitely check out my thoughts around the Kindle Oasis 2020 edition. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, see you later.